Please rise. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord, Savior Jesus. Amen. section of God's Word that guides our thoughts today is the Gospel lesson. John 21, beginning at verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Here ends the word. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, the book of Acts tells us that for a period of 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. 40 days of proof. 40 days where the Lord repeatedly appeared to his people. On Easter morning, of course, it started with Mary all by herself. Jesus appeared to her. And then to a larger group of women. After that, to Peter. And then a larger group of disciples. Jesus appeared behind locked doors. He appeared while walking in the open country or along the shores of the sea. Jesus spoke with his disciples. He ate with them. He said, here, touch me and see. I'm not a ghost. I'm a person just like you. Forty days of proof. Each time Jesus appeared, I'm sure their faith was strengthened. They were convinced he truly is alive. And with each appearance, of course, of the Lord, additional blessings were given. Joy, hope, peace, boldness, and the list goes on. Well, the event in our scripture text is no different. Jesus appearing to his disciples there along the, the Sea of Galilee. It gave them confidence. He truly is alive. But along with that, it gave them purpose, meaning, significance. Now our days matter. We've got something to do. The risen Christ gives purpose to his people. He did for the disciples and he does for us as well. Let's turn our attention now to this section of the word where Jesus gives us purpose. The risen Christ gives us purpose. I'll begin by adding just a little bit of context to this section of the word. If you were with us two weeks ago, you may recall the context. The gospel lesson from two weeks ago shared with us the event of the, uh, the disciples going out fishing. They were tired of waiting around. You know, Jesus had risen on Easter, and they were waiting and waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Peter said, I'm going fishing, and the others joined in. They were commercial fishermen, remember? So they went out and they fished all night long. 
And like many anglers, they came back empty-handed. Early in the morning, they're rowing into shore, and they see Jesus on the shore, and he calls out, Haven't you any fish? Or we might more accurately translate, So you didn't catch anything, did you? See, the question expects a no answer. We can phrase questions in English that expect a no answer. So you didn't catch anything, did you? Jesus knew the cargo bay was empty. So he phrased his question that way. You didn't catch anything, did you? Throw your net on the side of the boat there and try one more time. Well, at his direction, of course, the net was filled with fish. They dragged it ashore, counted 153 large fish, not little crappies, large fish that uh, they brought in. If you'd like to see what this area looked like, take a peek at the pictures posted just outside the sanctuary. On the left as you uh, leave the sanctuary, there's some pictures there that, that show the area where this event took place. Was it another 100 yards down the beach? Maybe. But it, it gives you the idea of, of what this area looked like. And as you look at those pictures, envision the disciples coming ashore, beaching their boat, dragging the net ashore, sitting down to a nice breakfast, campfire fish and fresh bread that Jesus had prepared for them. After breakfast, Jesus got down to business, didn't he? He says, Peter, do you truly love me more than these? Peter obviously knew exactly what the Lord was getting at with that question. You and I have to do some interpretation. We have to try to figure out, what do those words mean? Do you truly love me more than these? There are three options that are grammatically possible. The first option is the one I favor. It's this. Jesus would have been saying, Peter, do you love me more than these other disciples love me? Is your love for me stronger than their love for me? If that's the case, if that's what Jesus was saying, it would have called to mind Peter. Those bold words spoken in the upper room. Do you remember what he said? He said, Lord, even if they all fall away, not me. I never will. My commitment is too great. I love you too much. The others, they may fall away, but not me. That certainly is a sound interpretation. Seems to fit with the flow of thought, doesn't it? But before we accept that one, let's explore the other two options. Another option is this. Jesus may have meant, Peter, do you love me more than you love these people? Do you love me more than these? Peter, do you love me more than these? If that's what the Lord meant, it may have called to mind for Peter some of Jesus' words, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Many people loved others more than they loved the Lord. Perhaps that is what Jesus was asking Peter. A third option is this. Peter... Do you love me more than these? And with that, Jesus would have been gesturing to the nets, the boats, the fish, the lake. Do you love me more than all these things? You know, your old life as a commercial fisherman. Do you love me more, more than these things? If that's what the Lord meant, we recall that many people stopped following him because they loved the things of the world more than they loved God. Well, having explored all three options, I certainly lean toward that first one. Peter, do you really love me more than these other disciples? I say that because of Peter's bold statement in the upper room, his threefold denial that very night. Aren't you one of his followers? Who? Jesus? I don't know the man. Three times he denied the Lord, and so three times the Lord comes back and says, Peter, do you love me? Well, Jesus repeated that question three times to drive home the point, Peter, do you love me? Now, some, of course, have searched for some additional meaning in the slight variations 
of the question. If you look closely at the three questions Jesus asks, you, know, you notice there's slight variations. For example, Jesus only said more than these one time. The second time, the third time, he didn't say, do you love me more than these? He just said, do you love me? And then Jesus used two different Greek words for love. One is phileo, brotherly love. The city called Philadelphia comes from that word. Brotherly love, a sort of human love of humanity. And then agape, that deeper love, that uh, unconditional love. Uh, perhaps Jesus was urging Peter to look a bit more deeply at his love for the Lord. But for me, the simple flow of thought is this. Peter boldly asserted, I'll never deny you. Three times he did deny him, and so three times Jesus comes back and says, do you love me? All three times Peter responds, yes, Lord. And we see him getting more and more humble as this event unfolds. And then three times Jesus commissions, we could say, invites Peter to become involved in ministry. He said, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. A threefold commissioning. Again, uh, people have searched uh, the details, the slight variations for more significance or, or meaning. You notice that Jesus highlighted the lambs twice. Does that mean children should have double the effort? in, in uh, shepherding. Or you notice that Jesus said, feed twice and take care of once. Now, there may be some additional meaning there, but for me, the point is Jesus is calling Peter to ministry. A threefold call, a threefold commission. Peter, get involved in ministry. That is really what Jesus is saying. Feed my lambs even if you don't like how things are going to turn out. Jesus warned Peter that things were not going to turn out maybe the way he planned. Jesus put it this way, when you were younger, you dressed yourself, went where you wanted, but when you're old, you'll stretch out your hands, somebody else will dress you and take you where you do not want to go. Jesus, of course, was talking about the death by which Peter would glorify God. He was executed. He was put to death by the emperor. The historian uh, Eusebius writes this, Peter came to Rome where he was crucified head downward. The year was 64, the emperor was Nero. Nero persecuted the church. He hunted down Christians. Peter was one of them hunted him down, imprisoned him, and scheduled him for execution. Peter would not die at the paw of the lion in the Colosseum, nor would he be set ablaze like a human candle. Instead, he would be crucified. And according to tradition, Peter requested to be crucified upside down, not considering himself worthy to die the way the Lord had died on the cross. Jesus invited Peter to become involved in ministry. What significance Jesus attached to Peter's daily life. He would eternally impact the lives of others. And so it is with us. You know, three times Jesus asked that question, do you love me? Perhaps we ought to apply that question to our lives. Do we love Jesus? Well, let's review what he's done for us. He set aside his power and glory, his right to rule creation. Set that aside and took on a human nature with all the demands that uh, go with being a human. You know, he had to eat, he had to drink, he had to rest, he had to obey mom and dad as a little child. God saying he would obey mom and dad. Jesus humbled himself for us. He took our sins to the cross where he was executed and suffered the agony of hell, not for his sin, but for ours. The punishment that was placed upon him, it brought us peace. Then he rose and ascended where right now 
He is ruling all things for our good. This is just a quick overview of what Jesus has done for you and me. So again I ask, do we love him? Yes, we do. And so Jesus invites us, well then feed my lambs. Get involved in ministry. We have the chance to eternally impact the lives of people. Think of that. If have you ever gone down the path that uh, Solomon went down in Ecclesiastes, you know, meaningless, what's the use? Oh, just think about the purpose God has attached to your life. You can eternally impact the lives of others. Get involved in ministry. There are so many opportunities here at Ascension. You can sing in the choir. You can serve as an usher. If the grass ever grows, you can uh, sign up to cut it once or twice this summer. You can get involved in a committee. You can pray for the various ministries of Ascension. There are a number of ways in your Yellow Weekly News today that you can get involved in ministry. And when you do, whatever your piece of the puzzle is, when you are involved in ministry, you are impacting the lives of others for eternity. What great purpose Jesus has attached to your life. But what about John? What about John? Isn't that the question that came to Peter's mind as he walked down the beach? What about John? It says he turned around and saw John following and he said, What about him? Don't you love Jesus' answer? He said, if I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? Now, what exactly was Jesus getting at with those words? There seems to have been some misunderstanding of it amongst the disciples. Some of them thought, oh, he, he's not going to die. John's not going to die. But John cleared that up. He said, no, that, that's not what the Lord said. He just said, if I want him to remain, what is that to you? In other words, Jesus had some ministry plans for John. He had some other ministry plans for Peter. John's plans are the plans for John. Well, he would go on and serve in the kingdom for another 50 or 60 years, preaching and teaching. He would be privileged to write five books of the New Testament. Then he too would suffer persecution. Jesus had some ministry plans for John. And the Lord, with a, almost, let's say, a gentle rebuke, says, Peter, mind your own business. You know, what is that to you, Peter? I've got some ministry plans for you. You're, you're going to follow me, but I've got some other plans for him. Why are you worrying about his plans, maybe jealous of his ministry, meddling in his ministry? You take care of the tasks I have for you. My goodness, how we need such a reminder today. It is so easy to take our eyes off the tasks that God has given us and maybe let our eyes wander to the tasks God has given to somebody else, perhaps becoming jealous of them. Oh, I wish I could do that. How come he or she gets to do that? I should be the one to do that. Or if not jealous, maybe meddling in the tasks God has given to someone else. So easy for us to follow the example of Peter. If you found yourself doing that, if, they, if you have less than enthusiastically carried out the ministry assigned to you, please bring that sin to the Lord. Confess it to him. Hear him say, your sin is forgiven. Now go feed the sheep. Feed the sheep. For 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples. He gave so many convincing proofs that he was alive. Each one of them strengthened the disciples. Each one gave a blessing to them. Well, on this particular day, the disciples were strengthened and they were given purpose. And you and I find purpose in this reading too. And that's such an important thing for each one of us to know that our lives truly do have significance. Jesus has attached eternal worth, value to our ministry. Responding to his love for us. 
Let's feed the sheep. Amen. Please rise.